The story about Jesus flipping tables in the temple is one that those of us who were raised in the church know well, I would say. But did you know that the story is located in completely different places throughout all of the Gospels? Hi everyone, I'm Andy and my pronouns are they, them. Welcome to Assigned Christian at Birth. I've made several videos recently talking about differing accounts in the Gospels, and I've enjoyed making those so much, I decided to do another one. So sit back, relax, and learn more about the contradicting stories in the first four books of the New Testament. Let's get into it. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, otherwise known as the Synoptic Gospels, cover the life of Jesus and often hit a lot of the same points and recount many of the same stories. Of course, they don't match completely, but you can tell that the authors were working with a lot of the same source material. As I've mentioned in many of my other videos, Mark was first written around 60 CE, Matthew and Luke were written about 10 to 15 years after that, with John following up about another 10 years after that. What's wild is that none of the following stories appear in John. There's no mention of Jesus being born in Bethlehem or that he was born to a virgin. There's no mention of him being baptized and he does not preach the coming kingdom of God as an apocalyptic Jewish prophet or tell any parables. There's no last supper, but he does wash the disciples' feet in John. John's beginning is way more mystical than anything else in the synoptics. All the talk about word being made flesh and having been with God since the beginning and all that. This is only found in John. When miracles occur in John, he calls them signs, never miracles. And John is the only gospel that presents a theology stating that Jesus existed before his birth and that he was a divine being who became human. Neither of those things are found in the theology of the synoptic gospels. Since John is the latest New Testament gospel written about 90 years after Jesus died, it holds views of Jesus that developed later in the early Christian tradition, such as that Jesus was the metaphorical Passover lamb who died on the day that actual Passover lambs were killed, also that he claimed to be equal with God. There are many discrepancies between John and the synoptics, but since this is a mini-sode, let's talk about three of them. How many signs did Jesus give to his followers while he was here on earth? Mark 8, 12 says, And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Matthew 12, 39 says, But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except for the sign of the prophet Jonah. And then John 2, 11, 4, 54, and 6, 2 state this the first of his signs jesus did at cana in galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him this was now the second sign that jesus did when he had come from judea to galilee and a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick so let's recap in mark the first of the gospels written it says jesus refused flat out to give them a sign in matthew one of the middle gospels it says no sign will be given aside from the sign of the prophet jonah which means since jonah was inside the big fish for three days and nights so too would jesus be dead for three days and nights before resurrecting and then the latest gospel john mentions multiple signs or miracles in this gospel if you like what you've heard so far if you've learned something new please do me a favor and click that like button. It really helps out with the algorithm by pushing my video out to other people who need to see it. So thanks in advance. Number two, who was the first to find Jesus's empty tomb? Mark 16, one through two says, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early, on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. Matthew, also pretty much the same. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Luke says, the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then later in Luke, now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. So they weren't really named in Luke 23, but in Luke 24, he names a bunch of different people, including Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, but there's also Joanna and other women, supposedly. In John, it says, now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So in John, just Mary Magdalene by herself. So not even the synoptic gospels agree on how many women came to the tomb. In Matthew and Mark, we can see that the tradition evolved from positioning the two Marys to then adding the extra women in Luke. And then of course, only Mary Magdalene being mentioned in John. Maybe 
John only included Mary Magdalene because John is a Gnostic gospel and many of the Gnostics held the belief that Mary Magdalene was not only Jesus's disciple but also his wife. Therefore maybe he really wanted to like emphasize her importance to Jesus and to the story by having her be the first one to come find the tomb the way it was after the Sabbath. There's even a gospel of Mary Magdalene that was discovered at the end of the 19th century. I'm just spitballing here. There are vast list options to consider, but we're never going to truly know why the authors of the gospels made the changes they did. I'm just here to bring your attention to them. Number three. When did Jesus flip tables in the temple? The narrative occurs near the end of each of the synoptic gospels, but it occurs at the start of the Gospel of John. This in and of itself isn't so much a problem, but the issue is where on the timeline of Jesus's life, teachings, and doings it occurred. You would think if this was supposed to be a cohesive narrative that told the same story, the different sub-stories would be told in the same order, right? If this is a biography of Jesus's life and teachings and miracles and work, if all four of them are, you would think they would agree on the order of how things happened. In Mark 13, 15 through 17, Jesus flips tables after he curses the fig tree, but before his authority is questioned by the chief priests. In Matthew 21, 12 through 13, it occurs after the triumphal entry or Palm Sunday as we know it today, and before the cursing of the fig tree. In Luke 19, 45 through 46, the story is positioned after the triumphal entry and before Jesus' authority is questioned by the chief priest. And then in John 2, 13 through 16, Jesus flips tables right after he turns the water into wine at the wedding in Cana and before he teaches the Pharisee Nicodemus. So even though many of the same stories are mentioned, the timelines differ in every single gospel. But you don't have to take my word for it. Go look it up for yourselves. I would really love that. See what the verses say and see how you feel about it. A big lesson I learned from my time in evangelical fundamentalism is do not take what anyone says as fact until you research it for yourself, including me. I am making this resource in order to encourage you to dive deep. Ha! I was a dive deep into the word of God. <laughs> Dive deep into these texts and see if what you were taught your whole life is actually true or not. Read it with your own eyes. Thanks for hanging out today with me on this mini-sode. If you'd like to support me, please give me a follow for more totally free deconstruction content and community. If you're able to support me further, I accept donations toward my work at www.buymeacoffee.com slash assigned X-T-I-A-N. On that note, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Bye.